Wisdom. 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 First reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 27 through 31. Very familiar scriptures for many folks. Some of, some of my favorite in all the Bible. But then every time I read it, it's one of my favorite, isn't it? So It's because there's so much good in it. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, that my way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And then from the New Testament, I'll be reading uh, from the Gospel according to St. John, starting uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. After these things... Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. And Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may even have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? God always blesses the reading and the hearing of this is my holy and precious word. Amen. Help me name some the 12 disciples. Who are some of the 12 disciples? Peter, James, John, Andrew, Judas, Matthew, or, or his other, Matthew's other name is Levi. I like that because his name's on my jeans. How I remember things. Can you name any other? Thaddeus. I think his other name might be, uh, I don't know, I think Bartholomew and Nathaniel are the same, but Thaddeus. <laughs> Bartholomew. There's a couple actually of Judases. I think there's two Judases and maybe a couple of Jameses and the big three we remember are Peter, James, and John. Those are fairly easy to remember. But in this story, it's Andrew that really comes through. Philip's one. Philip. Philip uh, says, what are we going to do? There's people coming and, and, and there's no McDonald's around and what are we going to do? They don't have any place to get food and it would take a whole Here's salary just to buy enough bread for them, let alone, you know, mashed potatoes and corn and buffet. <laughs> Starting to get hungry now. What are we going to do? We can't, we can't even, there's no place for us nearby to even go and buy a little bit of bread. What are we going to do, Jesus?
Jesus says, something will happen. Don't worry. It doesn't matter that 8,000 people are coming to see us and we don't have anything to give them to eat. We'll have it. Is that called trust and faith in God or what? Some people would say, or what? That's crazy. That's madness. But you know what? If you bring Jesus just a little bit, he can do great things. He said, if Jesus said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, which is the smallest little seed, it'll grow into a great tree. You can move mountains, he said, with that little bit of faith. If you bring it to me. If you take a little bit of something and bring it to me, Jesus says, we can change the world. Andrew comes up to Jesus. Now, Andrew must be like one of the craziest guys in the whole world. I would not have the nerve to do this. All these people, thousands and thousands. Imagine a Super Bowl stadium full of people. Let's just bring it topical today. And there's no wonders there to feed anybody. There's no hot dog stand guys watching for Homeland Security. Did you read about that? That's who they have watching for terrorists is the hot dog vendors. Lord, help us all. The whole Super Bowl full of people in Indianapolis. And Andrew comes up. because Jesus is standing in the middle of that crowd looking around, look, smiling at him, blessing him. People are coming to him being healed before the game. Wouldn't that be great? They're coming to Jesus. They're bowing down before the game. He's healing them. Because that's what's happening on this hillside. They're all coming to him and he's healing them. And then somebody says, they're all hungry. And then Andrew comes up and he says, there's a little boy here with a couple fish and a couple pieces of bread. Can you do anything with them, Jesus? I wouldn't have the nerve to do that. All those people watching me, and I bring up a couple little fishies, a couple bluegill, you know, a piece of wonder bread. And I say, Lord, can, can this feed everybody? Praise God for a faith like Andrew's that says, I don't have much, and this little boy, and he's offering to share it. I mean, this is his and his family's, but he's offering to share it. Is it enough? Praise God. Is it enough? You know what? When we give it to Jesus, it is enough. Andrew says, there's this little bit, but what is that among so many? And Jesus says, it is sufficient. And he breaks the bread and he blesses that little bit of food, and he says, invite everybody to come and eat. Get some baskets. We'll put a couple pieces of these in each basket. And the people start coming forward, and everybody who takes one in, two more pieces appear. Somehow it happened, I don't know, but it kept multiplying. It wasn't being withdrawn, it was being advanced. I've heard some preachers talk about this story, and they say this really wasn't a miracle. It was just that when Jesus gave the first bite of food, everybody said, yeah, I got a piece of bread in my pocket too, and I'll share mine. They call it a miracle of sharing. That's not at all what the Bible says. This is a miracle of God's divine strength and his giving us a sign that when we give ourselves even just a little bit to God, he can do great things with us. Amen? Sometimes we think, I have the greatest faith in the world. Uh, I'm not like Peter and James and John. and I may not be like Andrew or any of them. I know I'm not Judas, I hope. But, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm not even sure if I do believe. Jesus says, bring that little bit to me, friend. And we'll change your life and we'll change the world. 
because when I'm with you, all things are... That's our state motto. Don't tell the ACLU. With God, all things are possible. We're going to share in Holy Communion here. It is such a wonderful, wonderful time for the church to share in this meal. And the Lord's table is open to everybody of all age and station and life. And if you're here and you love the Lord, you're welcome to receive communion. But as we share it, meditate. And, and just say, Lord, I don't have a whole lot to give, but, but I'm going to give that little bit. Let's see what happens with it. Trust in the Lord that He will bless it. That He will multiply it. That He will make it grow. And that in your life, goodness will be advanced, not shrunken. It will advance. Because Jesus is with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are so good. And you offer so much. We have just a little. Little faith. A little hope. A little love. And yet in your hands. Wow. Super things can happen. Bless this time of communion. May our hearts be open to you. And may you lead us from this place with renewed and strengthened joy and vision and hope for our lives and for your world. Amen.